everyone. Welcome to Toad TV. I am Mary Beth. I am Helen. We are the creative hands and minds behind Toad Hollow. And today is Tuesday, June 25th. And um, we have to get this on the first go through because I have to take Ivy to the vet. Right. So we are limited for time. <laughs> also, I'm wearing wool. <laughs> it's June. I'm wearing wool. So it's hot. The heat anyway. wave has subsided. But... Yes. We got a beautiful day yesterday. Oh my god, it was so gorgeous. Today's gonna be in the 90s again, but less humidity, so. It is just, yesterday was, there was a breeze coming through. It was actually almost a tinge of fall. Yes. It was, you know, do I want a sweatshirt or light sweatshirt yeah. or not? And, um, yeah, no. Can I was, sleep well tonight? Yes, yes I can. Yes, I can. Well, you would think so, but right. then. Um, I stayed up till after midnight finishing a book, which was stupid. And. <laughs> And then Ivy, you know, got me up at her Did usual not stay time. Up after midnight, and she was ready to go. So, uh, yeah, no, it was um, not the wisest choice. However, um, so I'm going to talk about this first, just because I'm wearing it and I'm hot, and I really don't want to wear it anymore. <laughs> it's great to show off. What did you finish, Mary Beth? I finished my Netflix and Chill Shawl. Um, I did it in clamshells, and then the border is whelks. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this closer so you can see the colors. They are so beautiful, and it's they're just gorgeous a, together. A gorgeous shawl. It I really adore is. this texture, this waffle texture. It, it's so pretty. Yeah. You know? And clamshells is such a great color. It is. To use for this. Oh my gosh. It's just absolutely beautiful. I did tassels on either end with two of the two different colors. Um, I didn't do it at the bottom just because she does say that you can make a tassel for down there, but I chose not to do that. I chose just to do it at the well, end. Well, the way you were wearing it, we were discussing it yesterday with the way you were wearing it before you took it off. It would just be like three tassels in a row right. and it's not necessary. No, so. really not. So it's just, it's just a lovely, big, gorgeous shawl. And you I haven't had, even blocked it yet. I know. I had a lot of fun knitting it. Um, at the end, I was ready to be done. When I was <laughs> when I was doing the border and uh, doing the I cord bind off for six hundred and fifty some odd look stitches. Look how pretty that bind off is. It is. It's beautiful. But I was ready to be done. Absolutely ready to be done. I um, also the rib is nice. Is it twisted or just regular? No, just regular. Okay. Very nice. But name. yeah, it's just two by two regular rib. Um, that I cord, it's a pain in the neck, but God, it makes a beautiful bind off. It does. It's a nice, nice finish. Yeah. Um, when I was making the tassels yesterday, I should have read how to make them first. My first tassel, I was measuring out the two strands and cutting and measuring and cutting and measuring and oh, cutting right, and everything. And then I started reading about how to do it and they're like, take a piece of cardboard and wrap it around. I didn't have a piece of cardboard, so I wrapped it around my phone and just went... It went so much faster. <laughs> so much faster. Look at so. the colors together in the tassel. They're so pretty. It's All right, so, so I have... Um, beach comery. I used two skeins of the clamshells and one skein of the whelks. I have 30 grams of the whelks left and um, about 56 of the second of the clamshells. So I have a pair of socks. socks that I can make in those. You could and do a puffle. I could. I could do a puffle. Well, don't I need 50 grams of the second? Um, Probably not. But you could take some from my sweater too. Because I don't use a full 100 grams yeah. for... The The only thing right. would be, would I need more of that? But if I do no, like... clamshells is your main, because that, yeah. that'll be your cuff and your heel. Right, so if I do this for toes. the cuff and the heel and the toes and everything and then use that... That should but, be enough. That yeah. should be it. So I may be doing a set of uh, puffle socks out of them. But that is that is done, finished. Gorgeous. Beautiful. It really is absolutely gorgeous. So if you wanted to make this shawl, the Netflix and Chill shawl, you need two of one color and one of the second. I chose to do it in clamshells and whelks, but you could do it out of any of the colors for the Beachcomber collection and it would be stunning. Uh, I was talking to somebody this morning and she's gonna do it out of Cockle shells for them too. Okay. And puka. 
Oh, that'll be pretty. pretty yeah. A lot brighter than this, right? But very, very and pretty. Very summery. Yes. So. Oh yeah, that'll be really summery and fun. Okay, there you go. All right, that's my one finish. Okay. Do my knitting very quickly because this was not a knitting week. Um, heat, humidity. I was gonna say, the heat wave number one took every ounce of energy that I had. Also, my and space. brain power. The brain power was not there. Because I, I was cross stitching at one point, and I'm like, I just it, it's too much thinking for cross stitching. Right. I'll go back to knitting, but then the knitting, the yarn was sticking to my fingers. It was just I'm not gonna, I'm not going to complain the whole podcast. Anyway, I worked on when I did knit. I worked on my North Star shawl because I've decided that I'm going to just knit on this one and get it done. Because I'm okay. especially now I'm like practically 75 percent done. Oh, okay. So I really don't have very much left to do. Oh, it's so. I am doing it in tourmaline from our sea glass colors. It's the North Star Shawl by Helen Stewart. It's her newest one. This is such a TV knit. It's three, uh, two rows, with and then you do a star row every one, every three. Rotations. Every third rows. Okay. Every, every third um, round. So. Just beautiful, gorgeous. It really is. That and color. It's, a, it's gonna is be so pretty. I'm gonna have to break into a second skein. And she does say in the pattern that she used 120 grams. Okay. Um. So I'm going to see how far I get because this is all I have left right now. Okay. The first skein. So um, I thought about just binding off and cutting it short. And I decided to do things properly. Right. And make it the size it's supposed to be. You could always band it with another color. I'm contemplating that because we have one of Pink Santa. Okay. That's got the pinks and the green. Right. Uh, that, that would be so pretty. And the white. Yeah. So I may end up doing that. That would be pretty I know we pretty. do have a tourmaline that didn't work out great. That we were twisting yesterday. Right. That had the, 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 the spots, spots on it. So I could take 20 grams of that one. Right. I don't want to take a random mini tourmaline because then we're going to be short of mini skin right. So, right. Um, so, we can see next week. Yeah, what who knows how it's is. going to work out. And I maybe mean, that you, know, you have enough to finish. Right. So, because um, this one skein is really, it's making nice. a much bigger shawl than I thought it was. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a nice size shawl. So, okay. North Star Shawl by Helen Stewart. Beautiful. That is my knitting for the week. I worked on, once I finished, uh, oh, I finished the Netflix and then I started working on the Simple Shawl uh, last night. And I only did a very little bit. I had um, started this before. I'm doing this in sand and then the sea glass minis. And I had done quite a bit in this color blue that you can barely see. Um, but the stitch numbers were off and the stitch counts were off and to get, I'm showing you that, to get this pretty seashell look, you need to have those stitches on point. So um, I took all those out. This is going to be so gorgeous. Yeah, I took all the blue out and uh, took it down to the band of sand and started over again. So that's what I was doing yesterday, making sure I had the right number of stitches, that I didn't lose anything when I was pulling it out, that kind of thing. Getting them all going the right way, because um, usually when I tink back and then try and pick up the stitches, half of them are going one way and half of them are going the wrong way. Oh, you know yeah. when I hit that? I just knit through the back loop. That's what I do. Yeah. That's what I do. I just knit through the back loop to bring it round. Um, so that's, that's where I am. I picked this up. I'm going to be working on this now. Uh, for a while to try and get this done. I've got three of the colors. There are four more to do. So this is number four. This blue is number four. I'm going to do the rest of the sea glass and then decide what the seventh color will be. That is so pretty. It's it going to be so gorgeous. So that's what that's where I am with this. So we will have kits for this, but Mary Beth just wants to finish it out. To make sure that for every band of color, a 20 gram right. mini will work. Um, so, but again, it's the simple shawl by the Noble Thread, and uh, all the links are down below. Okay. 
So that's my knitting. Okay. I broke out cross stitch. Um, well, it was so hot. I've been meaning to start cross stitching again anyway. So I pulled out my Fox and Goose Forest House by the by Owl Forest Embroidery. And I actually got quite a bit done on this. I have a bit of a conundrum, as always. There's always something wrong. I love the crows marching across the top. <laughs> so this is the first, I got the first page of the pattern done. Um, my conundrum, as you can kind of see it in the camera, can you see the goose? Yeah. Yeah. But is he two different colors? He's white. No. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. I can't, I'm too far away from the camera to see. Well, that's, see, that's okay. the problem. No, no, no. I can see him. I really okay. can. Um, and then the teapot on top of here is white. Okay. So I don't know whether I'm going to have to outline these. I'm going to, I'm just going to finish it. And see, and how, see it looks. how it looks. Um, but love the fox. And I really adore cross stitching. I forget because I take so many breaks from it, doing right. so many other different things. See oh, me? yeah, no, I can see him fine. But I'm holding it with the light shining on it. It's right. just like, okay, the goose is gone. And what happened was originally when I first started this, I was doing the goose first, and I read the colors wrong. Okay. And I did her in yellow. Oh, okay. And then I got mad, and I'm like, no, she's supposed to be white. Take them out. So I took them out, and then I did them in the white. Oh, Jesus. That's why I did them in yellow. <laughs> My subconscious brain. So, um, but looking at it now, and I think once she's done completely, I think with everything else fine. around her, I think she'll be okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Okay, because that's kind of funny because I'm having the same issue with mine. Oh, really? Um, but I think it's going to show up a little bit better on mine. Um, I am doing, I because I also pulled out my cross stitch, and Helen's going to put a picture here. I am doing There Is No Planet B from uh, Cloud Factory. So Helen's going to put in a picture. And I kind of got a head of steam going on this. So I was like, oh, I'm working through this. <laughs> so this is where I am so far. Oh, All right, so I, I really finished up. I can't wait for you to be done with this so we can frame it. I finished up the B for Planet B. And then I came down here. I and I, yeah, isn't that cool? I have added in, I finished up the otter and then I'm working my way down the mermaid. The problem is, Okay, can you pull it towards you? There you go, okay. The mermaid's body is white. Shoot the mermaid? Yeah. Yeah, you can see. So you can see it, but it does blend into right. the, the blue. It, I thought better. it was gonna be okay because it's I'm doing it on light blue. Yeah. Um, but it really is. No, cause you can definitely see the cloud up here. Right. And you can see, um, there's another cloud there. Right. Um, so I think it's fine. It just, it seems to, to me be right her. now it looks like two cockatoos. Um, so. Do I just see the two cockatoos? See that these are their feathers? Okay. They're in here. Okay. But see her body. You can definitely see You kind of body. think that her body is like right here, but it's not. Her body yeah. comes over like this. So. Um, I think nope, can. it's actually it's over it there. goes over yeah. there like that. See, I don't even know where it is. Um, yeah, you can see it. Yeah. It's just that it does blend in a little bit more than I was expecting. But um, I think it's going to be okay. Yeah. So, so this is this is there is no planet B. This is the bottom corner. So I am now starting to move my way over and come up and fill in here and that kind of thing, and then just come down the side. That's my timer that says I have to get going to go to the vet.
and we're back in a new location. However, Ivy has been to the vet and everything is okay. She, uh, she hurt her paw a little bit. She broke a claw, one of her nails, and she had to have it uh, bandaged up. So, but she's doing okay and she I had a picture of her and her bandage inserted. So she is the very, she is a very, very good girl. Right. She just, she did such a good job. Very um, brave. Our vet adores her. <laughs> we'll just give you an idea of what Ivy is like. Um, but, so we're back. Okay. And we uh, were down here because we didn't want her to have the stress of having to go up and down stairs to find us. And the first thing she did was go charging upstairs on three legs. So she's fine. She is good. She is very good. Um, she has to keep her bandage on for two days. And then I take her back and we have them take a look at it, make sure everything's kosher. And then it comes off again. But other than that, she... <laughs> Full range of motion. Things may be getting a little bit loud because Amazon just drove past. I don't know if they stopped for us or if they're keeping going, but um, she may be coming to tell us that they, they need to go check it out. Okay, so um, we had finished our cross stitch and we are now on to other stuff. What are you working on that's not yarn or cross stitch? I am doing um, my newest Lego ish project this is from a company called Pantasy, and this is 221 b baker street so this is sherlock holmes's building um he is 221 b and then there's a cafe that's next to him and i have been doing the um the kitchens that go in it and on the second floor i have been putting together his laboratory and i just did his the mantle that goes around the fireplace it's really very cool. How do the pieces fit? These are good. Okay. These are very good. So it's from Pantasy with a P. And this is authorized by the Conan Doyle Estate. So this is an authorized edition. Um, it is coming together very, very nicely. Um, everything is fitting together the way it's supposed to. And it's really, really cool. Well, that's cool because they had a lot of really cool... They had some the Panacea brand yeah. had a lot of really cool ones. Um, so, and they're kind of in between the really cheap one that didn't work and Lego as far as price point. So. Right. So here's the front of it. This is the first floor. And then if you look inside. I don't think there's a phone box. Uh, no, it's a mailbox. Oh, it was a mailbox? Okay. It's a mailbox. Okay. Um, and then if you look inside, you can see the bakery. Um, and then the other one are the stairs upstairs. And public. over here, you can see the donuts and everything. And then I'm working on the second floor right now. Um, so over here, I... Okay. So you can see inside his laboratory. There are Bunsen burners and things like that. I'm trying to see, can you see? Lift it up. Oh, there, you can kind of see through the window into it. Um, Is there so a shade that you pull down on the outside? There's a thing that you can't really see in very much. Oh, okay. This comes down like so. Um, but here's his, his fireplace with his skull and a knife and everything. And I'm working on this room right now. It's really cool. I'm enjoying it so much. Um, sorry, putting it down carefully. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, that's that's what I'm doing in the mornings, and it's a great way to start my day. Cool. I am uh, continuing with my English paper piecing, my Cherish quilt. So I'm working on my next block. This is the center. I'm using my Heather Ross fabrics. And then going around will be these. So I have three of these. Four of these, maybe four. So four of these done, and then I sew them to 
the hex go? And it will look like. Very soothing. I love this plaid. Yeah. Pink and yellow. Love that. It's almost lunchtime. That's the color palette of the next block. Oh, it's so pretty. And then I think I'm going to move on to a new fabric line. Oh, okay. okay. Heather Ross, but a different fat quarter bundle. Okay. So. Very cool. Lots of fabric left over, though, to continue doing oh, other yeah, projects. Oh, yeah, I can do other things, yeah. So that's that's the outside of the yarn and right. um, knitting, sewing type of thing. Okay, all right. Uh, moving on to reading. Yes. Okay. I have finished two audiobooks and one physical book. The two audiobooks are the second and third book in the Elizabeth Cage series by uh, Jody Taylor. I finished um, Dark Light and um, oh, I had it before. White Silence, right? White Silence was the first one. Oh, you finished three? I finished the, all three of them. Um, oh, okay. But so I, I'm pretty sure now? I finished the other one first before. Um, oh my goodness. What is that one called? Line something line? Hold on one second. Long Shadows. Something mine. Long Shadows. So, uh, Dark Light and Long Shadows were sec the second and third of the series. I like the series overall. I really, I gave uh, the first two four and a half stars and the third one four stars. Wasn't really thrilled with the way they ended it. I, I thought they, she ended it, um, I wasn't happy with the way she came to her conclusion, what the conclusion was, and then the last bit it just made no sense to me whatsoever. So I don't know okay. if there's supposed to be another one in the series or not. But um, I still gave it four stars. So it's not like it was terrible. I love Judy Taylor. I like these characters a lot. I um, I finished A Symphony of Echoes, which is the second in the um, St. Mary's time travel series that she wrote. And um, one of the things I wrote when I was writing it was that I love the characters so much that the plot is really secondary. It is. It absolutely is. And with those, the plot is basically the same, only set in a different time period. Right. You know, there are different things, and the conversations I mean, are different. But. Right. It's, uh, you know, they go back in time, there's a conflict, will they get back, right. will they get back. Um, so, but the, the characters are just so much fun, and they the are. banter between the characters. That's part and of the, it. And the relationship between the characters the and their friends, the, just yeah. the friendly camaraderie. It, absolutely. Um, um, and they have your back, 100%. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, all of them have your back. Yeah, I'm reading, the, I'm uh, doing the third one now, and they're in Troy. And you, I remember you said it when... Uh, <gasps> That's so hard. Yeah, Troy was, Troy was that, difficult. That... Because she's out of, I'm out of Troy now, but... That was hard. Yeah. That was really, really hard. Um, but in the Symphony of Echoes, I mean, what she had to do to Mary Queen of Scots... That was rough. Yeah. Um, okay. I am listening to, right now, um, A Natural History of Dragons by Marie Brennan. And it actually is very, very good. It's a natural historical look at someone who is researching dragons. Oh, okay. Purely fictional. Right. Um, it's not even in this world so much she keeps retire re referring to the Ivorish and the Scalish which I'm pretty sure are Ireland and Scotland oh, okay but she's kind of you know turned it on its ear a little bit yeah um it is set 1800s probably okay and uh, a woman goes on an expedition to research dragons which is unheard of to begin with but um and then she, they're learning all about dragons and what makes dragons dragons kind of thing um and it's it's fascinating but there's a lot of there's not 
there is a plot, but it's not plot driven. There's a lot of histor uh, natural history kind okay. of side of it. You know, talking about the dragon's wings and what makes up a dragon's wing and how is it different from a bat's wing kind of thing. Okay. So that there's that side of it as well. Um, but good people, good uh, good storyline, and I'm if you get put dragons in it, I'm pretty much all in. Yeah. I love dragons. So for me, this is this is a good one. I think there are more by her for this series. I'm not sure. I know that there's another series that's very uh, popular in um, like the science fiction fantasy world okay. that she is half of. I didn't realize it was written by two different people. She is half of it. Oh, okay. Um, but I have not read them at all. I don't know them at all. It's just um, I've heard people talk about it on book. Oh, so, okay. Um, but this is good. This is a good one. So A Natural History of Dragons by Marie Brennan. Okay. I finished reading um, Midnight, Midnight Snacks Are Murder by Libby Klein. Um, that's the second in the Poppy McAllister, I'm pretty sure. Yes. Um, cozy mystery series. They're set in Cape May. Um it was a lot of fun yeah it's a, i mean it's a cozy mystery there's low stakes as far as the the whole mystery thing <laughs> um but she's got a crazy aunt uh even crazier mother-in-law um it's fun for the cape may setting and uh it's a very snarky uh a la stephanie plum yes tone to it so i i've i really enjoyed it it's yeah, good, good and there are a lot of them yeah i gave it a Three and a half stars, so um, quick read. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's one of those that you can go back to at any time. And I'm pretty right. sure because you didn't read the first one, you right. jumped in on the second one. You can pick them up anywhere and read them, kind of like the Stephanie Plums, right. and not worry about missing too much. I mean, you, you can easily figure out, you know, what you miss as far as the background of relationships right. and things like that. Yeah. So, um, I have finished. I just finished lying in wait by Liz Nugent. This is kind of a disturbing little novel. Uh, the first <laughs> sentence is, my husband did not mean to kill Annie Doyle, but the lying tramp deserved it. And it's told um, from the viewpoint of three different people. The woman whose husband killed Annie, um, Annie's sister Karen, and Lawrence who is the killer? No, Lydia's son. Oh, okay. Um, but the whole reason they were tied up with Annie is a little bit twisted. Um, all these people are just wackadoodle. And um, where did we get it from? I think we heard about it on one I've of the currently reading oh, okay. um, indie press lists. Oh, okay. And we we got it as part of that because it sounded really good. Um, I did not like this that much. I didn't like the people. Um, it's I didn't mind the writing style. It's just it was kind of slow for me, and um, the story was disturbing. It's just it's not my favorite. So. Um, I don't know whether I will do another one by this author or not. She won an Irish Woman of the Year in Literature in 2017, so she's very, um, people love her. Just not so much for me. So I finished it though. I was up till after midnight finishing it, which as I said was stupid. <laughs> um, but uh, somebody gave it uh, the New York Times or uh, Marion Keyes, who is a New York Times bestselling author, gave it a review that says, a tense, taut, almost gothic thriller, impossible to stop reading. I did not feel that. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I almost stopped reading several times, but I told myself, just finish it off. Just finish it off. I mean, there's not even a who done it because you know from the very beginning right. who did it. It's just, um, and <sighs> there's a police detective in it that is so horrible and just 
in the 80s it's in the set part of it's set in the 80s and what he suggests to people in order to get information oh. it's just revolting okay. so um yeah turned me off quite a bit anyway um it it might be for somebody else who really is into this kind of thing uh but for me not so much yeah i really i need to kind of like one of them yes i i, I, I like or it's got to be really well written and right. page turnery yeah so um and i mean there are some times where you read the book and the characters are cold and yeah. you don't hate them you know you don't dislike them i did not like these people at okay. all so anyway okay and then i finished uh this morning i finished the bellwoods game by celia crampion um this is a middle grade novel it's very definitely written for middle grade so um you go in expecting that simplistic writing style um but it's a fun book it really is i gave it five stars i would have loved it when i was that age i would have been terrified by it um it's uh set in a small town and there's the bellwoods forest and every year the sixth grade class has to on halloween has to play the bellwoods game to save the town for another year from whatever is in the Bellwoods Forest. Um, and it is just one of those when you're middle grade, the delicious terror of reading it and it would be a page turner. Right. Um, it's got illustrations in it too. Because yeah. I've started, I just started it this morning. Um, so that uh, we're reading it to pass the test to see whether it should go down to the nephews. And I say yes, because I think they'll love it as long as you know boys being boys can get over the fact that the main character is a girl i'm pretty sure they'll be able to yeah i am going to read that and then i'm going to read the island of the ants right after it and, and we can then send them both we'll down. put them in a package yeah. and send them down to them because um cullen might get a kick out of them yeah so, so um so yeah that's my reading for the week so now i have started the bellwoods game um we'll see how long it takes me to read that i don't think it's gonna take and what have you started? Uh, I am starting Entwined. This was uh, from our book vent. Mary Beth gave this to me for book vent. It's a, the retelling. 12 a retelling of the 12 Dancing Princesses. So I'm excited to get to the that. The cover itself it's gorgeous. is beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so you start with a really light lemony yellow <laughs> and you throw in some apple green and a light light frozeny blue yeah it's gonna do something with yellow. that yeah we could do something with that very so, pretty see how the book is right all right so that's the reading that is where we are all right so we have finished season four of jack ryan Blue this is it. We're moving into what we're watching. Oh, yes. What we're watching. Yeah. So we blew through season four of Jack Ryan, so that is done. Um, we have now started... Oh, we finished the second half of season three of Bridgerton. When it's hot and muggy and you don't want to move, it's perfect yeah. time to binge. Yeah. A lot going on next door. Um, and we are now... We have done... With, Oh, Let me. no, there's a child riding by on their bicycle. This, we sh this cannot stand. We have gone through the first season of The Bear, and we are now about halfway through second season of The Bear. and Just in time for tomorrow when the third season the third of The Bear season's coming out. I really enjoy the show. Yeah, I like it a lot. Um, um, however, seen the it's first intense. Season. It is. I forgot how intense yeah. it is. Um, it can be very stressful watching it sometimes. Yes. Um... The first season much more than the second season. The second season isn't nearly as stressful. And in your face. Right. A lot um, of shouting at each other in the first season. Yes. Um, but I love the character development. Yes. Um, so. No, it's it's good. It's very, really good. very good show. And uh, we have started Victoria. That's with the mother. mother. And uh, very, it likes that very, very much. Right. It likes that a lot. Um, so that's good. That's a good one. Because we have a couple seasons of that, so. Yeah. And I think we may be going into the crown. Oh, okay. We'll just okay. work our way through the queens. Yeah. Um, but that is where we are as far as watching. So okay. I think that is pretty much it. 
because the guys have to go out. Um, somebody's got to feed Helen because she's <laughs> her stomach's just growling. Um, we apologize for switching spaces places halfway through. I just realized we switched places because down here I'm on this side and you're on that side. But you guys we're, can figure it out. We're keeping you on your toes. Yeah. Um, anyway, so we'll be back on Friday with our live uh, stream yep. at noon. Um, Other than that. Have a wonderful rest of the week. Stay cool. And we will see you. Nope. Go forth and create. And we'll see you on Friday at Bye. noon live. Bye. Bye.